Let's get into God's word, liberality, and we're looking at, um, this is part two. And we go on with our scripture, John 3, 16. John 3, 16. Praise the Lord. All right, amen. Let us look at verse 16. We are looking at the core attributes of the person of God. Because we have said so far, when I know who the Lord is, I know who I am. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. amen. You know who you are by looking at your father. Praise the Lord. So John 3, 16. We are looking at God. So who is God? For God so loved the world. So who we can say God is a lover. We saw in 1 John 4 verse 8, God is love. So the point will be, if God is love, I am love. Because I know who I am, not by my experiences. I know who I am by what God has done in me. Let's declare this together. I am a son of God. He has given me his life. Amen. He has given me his life. He has given me his spirit. If he is love, I am love. That's the point. For God so loved the world. What does love do? He gave. So in loving is a characteristic that we see that is giving. So if I'm a lover, by nature I am a giver. Many people can give that are not lovers, but if you are a lover, automatically you will be a giver. Amen. Praise God. A the symptom of a love-struck entity is its proclivity to want to give. It's difficult for you to have that as a quote, but take it later. I'm saying to you that when you want to know a lover, one of the things, you may see many things, but there is something you can't miss about lovers. It's giving. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That is why God is a giver God. James 1 verse 5 will say, if any man uh, desires wisdom, let him ask of God. Who gives, he gives to all men. Who does God give to? All men. He gives liberally. And he upbraids not. Meaning God does not say, okay, it is because of this thing that you did I am not giving to you. That's the meaning of upbraid. So there is something about God. God has an addiction. God is an addict. If you went into this addict class, you find God there. What is the addict class that God is in? He has a giving addiction. Hallelujah. He cannot not give. He is such a, he is such a giver God that that is who he is known as. If Len, James 1, 5, anyone asks, uh, lacks wisdom, let him ask. If you as they lack, you can ask. Why do we ask? Because there's a God that can give. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. amen. I'll say it again. Why, if there is a lack, we can ask. Why do we ask? We have a God that can give. God is more willing to give than man is actually willing to receive. God is a giver God. Embossed in gold, in the CV of God, is that skill. It's called giver. Hallelujah. Uh, hallel because you, there is a mindset with which a believer, when he's talking about petition praise, he doesn't come from fear. He comes like he's talking to a God he knows is a giver. The God that gives to all men. The God that gives liberally. The God that does not breed. In fact, you look at Matthew 5.44. Matthew 5.44 will tell you, this God is so good, he gives rain, sun, to the ungodly. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, there are many atheists today that say there is no God. God does not seize the sun from them. Amen. They just wake up, they are the only ones that cannot see the sun. <laughs> Their clothes don't dry. <laughs> Because they said there is no God. No. The Bible says he gives rain and sunlight to the godly and the ungodly. That's the nature of God. Unbelief is to see God in a different light. Amen. What is unbelief? To see God 
outside of who he is. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. I'm saying that what an unbelief is sin. That is why knowing who God is is crucial to you. Because you can be living in sin without knowing. Unbelief is seeing God outside who he is. Let's see what happened to the Jews. Psalm 78. We're going to come back to John 3. Remind me. Psalm 78. I want to be, read that in, in verse 22. Um, let me try to go there. Psalm 78. Amen. Church, amen. Look, I want someone to read that to me from the NLT version. Just to help you see what I'm saying. Psalm 78 verse 22, the NLT version. Stop. They did not believe God or trust in him. Uh -huh. the, what was the issue? To care for them. So that idea you have. That God is not caring. Is unbelief. It happened to the Jews in the wilderness. Amen. Are you there? Should you read it again? Yes. Uh, okay, please read it for them again. For they did not believe God. They did not believe God. On him. To care, for them. to care for them. That idea that makes you think that you know what? You are all alone in this world and God doesn't care for you. It's unbelief. You don't know whom you worship. That's the point. And many Christians go on like that. They think that God is one person that doesn't care for them. Tell your neighbor, God cares for me. Come on, tell your neighbor, God cares for me. Right? Look at Luke chapter 12. Remind me, we will go back, we will go back to John 3. Luke 12. I want to read, is it Luke 12 now? Okay. It's talking about the, it's talking about the, it says, it says in, in, the, in the scripture that it says, what is the price of five sparrows? It says, are five sparrows not just two copper coins? Yet God does not forget every single one of those sparrows. Those sparrows are like one P. That's the point in the market. The Bible says God does not forget them. The Bible says even the very hair on the hair of, I mean, okay, I mean, Luke 12, Luke 12, I'm in verse 6. Sorry, Luke 12, 6. Are not five sparrows sold for two fathom? And not one of them is forgotten before God. For even the air, very air, someone touch your air if it's natural. Even the very air of your hair <laughs> are all numbered. You might have issues. Right? It says, but your own very hair is numbered. Yes. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than sparrows. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Sparrows that are, they cost one P. God says your very hair. You know you don't know the number of your hair. God knows it. it. That is a description to show you detail in his love for you. The point we are starting off with is God is love. God is love. We are going to see the full definition of his love. But the present definition of his love that we are looking at here is the fact that he's saying, you know what, sparrows, even sparrows can claim to be loved by me. And they cost one P or less in the market. He says, how much more you? He says, the very air on your air is numbered. Amen. amen. Church, amen. He says, fear, it, look, the point is, in verse 6, fear not, therefore. Tell your neighbor, fear not. Fear not. God cares for you. Amen. 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 Church, amen. Tell your neighbor, fear not. Fear not. Be more, you know, a, a, a story, just a story. There was someone that came to church, and that person had a sickness, right? And I, went, I was teaching, and I wanted to show somebody in the church life meeting on how to cast out a demon in the person that was standing so that the person would be free. So the person went and said, go. I said, go. I said, 
Not because of that, because even me that I'm looking at you, I can see that you are afraid. I said, walk out of the church. Come back with a sense of authority. I said, out! <laughs> right? And then he did that, and the demon left. The person was free. My point, I said that to say, when we are talking kingdom stuff, talk with a verbosity. I, I, I don't know what verbosity means, but it just came out nice. <laughs> Amen. 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 Say, tell your neighbor, God cares for you. Better, amen. Don't let your God cares for you even scare the person. Are you, are you sure? Are, are you, the way you are talking, amen. amen. It says it, the point here is fear not. And like I always say, my teaching is always doctrine and prophetic. There is always a tendency in the days to come for men to be taken over by fear because of the things that come in the nation and the things that are to come. And then people get so bogged down with the details of it. God's word to you, Glara Bosta Kisa, is fear not. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Church, hallelujah. 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 Yeah. He says the hair on your hair is numbered, meaning not one of them will miss. Amen. Except you are the one that removed it by combing it too hard like I do. Amen. Yeah, none, meaning nothing will touch you. Yes. Praise God. Nothing. The point here is have this consciousness. God cares for you. You are not like the Israelites. What did they do wrong? They did not just believe that God cared for them. It, regardless of all that they saw in the wilderness. They just, yeah, we know that. If you read Psalm 48, very beautiful scripture. It's a historical scripture uh, about this, the story of the Jews. So we know that he cleaved the rock and water came out. But can he give us meat? Amen. amen. Church, amen. amen. And that's why it's good to have rehearsals of the goodness of God in your life. When David will want to slay Goliath, David said, the Lord God that delivered me from the bear, the Lord God that delivered me from the lion, will take down you this uncircumcised Philistine. That's how you win. Amen. So you rehearse. That is why the Bible says when Joshua... Right, and the children of Israel were going to go through the Jordan. The Bible says the Lord said, Stop in the middle of the Jordan when the water parts, take stones from it, take it outside with you, so that you may remember as a memory of what I did. So, when you face other things, you'll be able to say, The God that devoured Tamakoko ah, is going to pahaha for me, amen. The God that divided the Red Sea, what else can be? It's the same thing. You remember your salvation. The God that he came into this world. Are you hearing me today? He died for me. He came out of the grave. What more? Are you hearing? Have memories. Have mindsets. You have to put it upon your mind. Let this mind be in you. Of God's love for you. It's easy to forget. Situations and circumstances come around your life that makes you forget. Remember, let me tell you something. The Jews forgot. You know, you will have thought it's not possible if someone divided the Red Sea, ah, in front of me, everything went woo mm -hmm, and I'm going way in the middle. I will never forget. You know, there are many great things that have happened to you. I'm not even talking about what God has done for you in salvation. There are many, if we investigated your life personally, the person that is in sorrow and worrying and saying, what will God do? Will God, will God? If we asked you some questions, we'll be able to see things that are not possible that God has done for you. But we keep a hardened heart when we don't rehearse the goodness of God. Amen. We, what do we, we keep a hardened heart when we don't rehearse the goodness of God. So when they got to the, uh, the he divided the Red Sea, they got to River Jordan. They were saying, ah, what's going to happen? That's why you remember his goodness. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalm 103 will tell you, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. By now, you should have a benefit book. Praise God. You always just quick to share the testimony and move on. That's the problem. That's the problem. That's why when you get to the next stop, you're stuck. By now, you have a benefit book. The Lord, I was in a state. And then see what he did. 
I could not do this. See what it, no, that, this one that has come. Now, if, if he could deliver me from the bear, David said. If he could deliver me from the lion, David said. Uh, what is this uncircumcised Philistine? So other people are seeing a Goliath. David is seeing a God with him that delivered bear and delivered lion. So David is not overwhelmed by Goliath because he has seen the faithfulness of God. It's not because other people around him had not experienced the faithfulness of God. They did not bring it to mind. I am saying to you, the man of faith is the man that remembers the goodness of God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Let's go back to John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. So God is a lover. Unbelief is to see him outside of this spectrum. Praise the Lord. This lover is a giver. Not only is he a giver, we see in John 3, 16, how he gives. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So God is a sacrificial giver. If God has not led you around sacrifice, check your Christianity. Amen. Amen. Let me just be telling you slowly. Because love leads to sacrifice. The spirit of God in you leads you to sacrifice. Amen. 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 It will not be convenient, but you do. How many people realize that Jesus Christ was not on the cross laughing? Huh. They nailed him. He said, that's ticklish, man. The Roman soldier, stop that. Stop that. They pressed him on the side. He said, Kai now. No, he didn't. Amen. It hurt him. It sacrificed. When you ask him, why was I doing it? He will say, I was doing it. For, for people. Second yeah. Corinthians 5.21 He became sin. Who knew no sin? That we, it was about we, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He went through that pain. This, this man, God man, at a point would say, God, if it be thy will, let this cup pass over me. Meaning it wasn't funny, but sacrifice makes you do. This is, the part, this is the pathway. We sacrifice. When we seem like it is overwhelming, we pray. As we pray, we are strengthened to continue the life of sacrifice. Let me say it again. In the life, you see Jesus. A man, okay, let me start well. You pray, then you sacrifice. That's the right way. As you pray and sacrifice. In the midst of living the life of sacrifice, you might get burdened. You pray. You don't say, you know what? Enough is enough. I, I can't be... Uh, uh, we, we, uh, you know those kind of things that we always say. You say no, 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 no. You, you, you don't say, I'm done. I, I'm, I'm just done. I'm, I'm just done. I'm just done. No. That is why a believer that is not praying is a reckless believer. Because we pray through our Christianity. Because the solution to when I am overwhelmed in my sacrifice lifestyle is prayer. Jesus Christ knew he was coming to die. He had been prophesying with his mouth to the disciples, I am going to die. He was a man of prayer. He got towards Gethsemane. What happens to him? He is now in the mind thinking about it. He says, oh God, can this pass over me? He says, but not my will. Let your will be done. And he kept praying. The Bible says angels came and did what? Strengthen him. Don't pity a man of prayer. He, is, he has access to angelic strengthening. Hallelujah. You want to have access to angelic strengthening as a lifestyle. You will be a man of prayer. If not, after a while, you start sacrificing, you start complaining. Amen. Has it happened to you before? So what's going on? What, 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 what's all this? Only me. Only me. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. God will soon call me when I'm praying now to say, I call Sister Kofo. Why didn't Sister Kofo call me? When you start to think like that, don't, don't leave yourself. You know, a lot of us leave ourselves who think some things. You just say, no, 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 it's a symptom. You know, your body doesn't just break down. It just gives you like a small headache. Then your toe will be paining you. <laughs> That's how it comes. When you start to see yourself, you're complaining about things. You're getting agitated. You're getting frustrated. That's your spirit. That, that is, that's them telling you, bro, pray. 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 Because prayer is how we do this kingdom. Amen? amen. Church, amen. Mm, pray. So you, uh, even Jesus, if Jesus as a man prayed, I find it very, very bold 
for you that you are not Jesus, not to pray. Amen? Amen. Because it is through prayer you do the will of God. There are some things that you cannot do by the energy of the flesh. You can't. There are some sacrifices you cannot pull through. You will rebuke the devil. God will tell you to do something. You say, I rebuke you, devil. Because you will think it's the voice of the devil. Yeah, but as you pray, you realize. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. amen. All right. All right. We're talking about the love of God. God is love. God is giving. God is sacrifice. It, God is love. You are love. God is giving. You are a giver. God is sacrificial. You are sacrificial. And Jesus, the man, God as a man, came into this world to be able to fulfill his ministry of sacrifice. He stayed in prayer. Sometimes, you know, we read the book like it didn't happen. It happened, though. You will be reading the book. They will tell him. You know, John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin, meaning his father's brother's child. That's John the Baptist. Amen? So they'll be talking to Jesus. They'll just tell Jesus, John the Baptist, your brother, has just been beheaded. And how did he die? Herod has one silly little lady that is just dancing. And then the silly lady, after dancing, Herod gets so intoxicated and said, tell me anything that you want. And then that one also, that is a silly lady, had a silly mother. Went to meet the silly mother. The mother said, tell him that you want John the Baptist's head because John the Baptist told the truth. John the Baptist said, you are another person's wife. You should not be staying with the king. So she left, she left her brother to marry the king. And John the Baptist said it. So she was angry with John. And then that's how they told the king that that's what they wanted. The king was afraid. He loved John, but because of the people around him, when he made the proclamation, he had to kill John the Baptist. He killed John the Baptist. They told Jesus... After they told Jesus, Jesus loved John. Jesus was a human being. How do we know? Jesus loved Lazarus. Lazarus was not his, his, his cousin. Lazarus, he cried at the tomb of Lazarus before doing the, the, um, the miraculous. But the point is, Jesus was told that his cousin, John, has just been killed. Jesus sends all the way. They will not go. He does the miraculous and he goes to pray. Amen. He goes to pray so that he can come out to continue what he's meant to do. I am saying that prayer is your auto response as a believer, not to walk out of the will of God. Amen. Amen. You will logically say, yeah, 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 he lost, he, he, he lost his cousin. He's no longer in the mood to heal the sick. He's no longer in the mood to preach the gospel. And he's not preaching the gospel and he's shouting to everybody, repent, oh, you, you know, before. <laughs> I'm not in a good mood, oh, my, my cousin just died. If you want to die, die. He, you, know, you know, there is ministry with anger. We didn't see that with him. He could have. Because he, except the man will give himself to prayer, he will misbehave. Pray, praise God. You know, we are talking about giving. We are talking about sacrifice. We are saying that it is in prayer you are able to get the strength to live the sacrificial life you ought to. Meaning that if the brother is not praying, he will not be able to, as it were, manifest the life of sacrifice he ought to. So one of the first things the devil takes away from you, when he wants to stop you from fulfilling God's will and God's plan, is that he will take away prayer. Because the moment he takes away prayer is only a momentum. It just takes a while. After a while, it stops. When it stops, you realize you are not able to do the things you could always do. Prayer is how men have access to supernatural aiding to do the supernatural work of God. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Right? So we have seen it that God is a lover, a giver, a sacrificer. But let me now say this to you. 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4. What does God want you to do to be able to to live the kind of life of love, of giving, of sacrifice. The first thing he wants you to do is remember his love for you. First John chapter 4. Are you in first John chapter 4? Look at verse 19. 
First John 4, 19, are you there? We do what? Church, we love him. Why? Because, so the because God calls you to recognize his love. In recognizing his love, he strengthens you to love others. So salvation is a calling into the love of God. So the man that is called into the love of God is now given the equipment and ability to love others. We love him because he first loved us. So Christianity is not about loving God, though you love God. Christianity is about acknowledging and recognizing his love for you. As you acknowledge and recognize his love for you, you respond. Someone say you respond. I many people know that we are really responsive people. Should we prove it here? Amen. We are responsive people, right? You know, there is a way that it doesn't matter how Sister Victoria sees us. If we just every day, we can do it every week she comes to church. We are just giving her money, giving her food, giving her money. We didn't say anything. Good to see you again. 200 pounds. We love the way you're looking. 500 this week. We give our food. You say, everything this week, what are your needs? Do you know that it gets to a point you just be like, oh my God, what can I do? Amen. Amen. And if she receives the love, she will respond to that love. Let me say it this way. Let's imagine she did not know anybody here. Right? So she doesn't really know us, but she just came in today. Which, God just laid on my house to give you 500. The other one said 250. The other one said one. So she has come out of the service with one five. Wow. Right? Next week she comes into the service. God is laying it on only. only it's, it's like, what's going on here? Before you know it, do you realize that God will soon start laying, whether he's laying it or not laying it, <laughs> God will start to lay in Sister Victoria's heart that there is so much she needs to lay on. Amen? Amen. Yeah, she needs to. Yeah. Why? Because we are called to respond. God initiates love. We are the ones that respond. What people try to do is just say, I'm going to love God. God says, no, I want you to receive. When you receive, you are able to give. That's why we feed on the gospel. We hear of how much he loves us. We sing about it. We meditate on it. Right? As we do that, we, our mindset is changed. Amen. Just like we are talking, he cares for us. He cares for us. He cares for us. Your mindset is now saying, okay, why am I so bothered? He actually cares. That's what we are talking about. We are called to respond to the gospel. Amen. We are not to initiate. We are to respond. Praise the Lord. Because this is the way it goes. The Bible says, we love him. Because he first loved us. So, what did we take or experience from God? We experience a God that is loving. A God that is what? Giving. A God that is what? Sacrificing. Praise God. As we experience this from the Lord in our salvation. How do we know he loves us? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish. But have everlasting life. So every time I say I have everlasting life, I am saying I recognize his love. Amen. 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 The more you realize I've been saved from I've been saved, saved from so great a sickness, eternal death. The more you realize it, you live your life for others. You live your life sacrificing. That's why Jesus will say, No one can say he loves me and hates people. It's not possible. Because if you have been receiving love from me, that's what you will give. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Let's read it together. First John 4, 19. We love him because he first. Look at verse 20. If a man say, I love God and hate his brother, is a what? Liar. It was, the Bible says we don't even need to check if he's saying the truth. We just announce it. It's a lie. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen. How can he love God who he has not seen? So the point is, I am to fellowship with God to receive his love. Where do I take that love to? 
the statement, I love God, is seen in how I deal with others. You cannot be a I love God fan and you don't like people. I don't like people coming to my house. I don't like, you know, let's just be meeting outside. Let's just, ah, no, 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 you're a liar. Praise God. That's what the Bible says. Love is hospitable. What you have, you want to share. I remember telling the story when I first came, when I first came into this country. Say, it's, it's UK. Uh, no, no, no. We are not UK citizens. We are kingdom citizens. You, one must come before the other. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. amen. Hospitable, hospitality is part of our kingdom. Now, in the UK, we are quite, quite conservative. Um, you know, if you want to come to my house, you have to give me six months notice. You have to, you know, have to, you have to, you have to, you have to you know. And all of those many, many things that people look at as normal. We are hospitable. Amen. We make people feel special. Amen. Because God has made us feel special. You take the best bowl and bring it out. Don't say, no, 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 I'm leaving the best bowl until the... You know, there are people... I grew up... Well, my mom is not here. I grew up in a family where which we, we use normal bowl. It's when the president or vice or head of this or that comes to our house, then we now see all these special bowls with gold edges. <laughs> Amen. I've, been, I've forgiven from that trauma. But I am saying to you, you're a new creation. You get the best bowls out. Make you feel good. Amen. We are new... That's how we prove that we love God. How we deal with people. Amen. amen. Church, amen. We are after people. It's a thing that we recognize because we recognize how much God has done for us. We are not acting. It's real. Can we get a believing amen? amen? We are not acting. I said it's real. Praise God. We are not acting. I said it's real. Praise God. We are after people. Let's get, let's get into the teaching. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. Praise God. Amen. So this life of God, which is now the life in you, Paul now talks about it in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. He tells us in chapter 8, look at verse 1, Moreover, brethren, we do witness of thee, Grace of God. So what is this grace of God? This grace of God is the love of God. The grace of God is the? Let's look at it together. We saw it last week. 2 Corinthians 13, 14. The grace of our Lord is the? So when we talk about grace, we are talking about loving. When we are talking about grace, so grace is actually loving, giving, and sacrificing. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. amen. A lot of people want to be the beneficiaries of grace. They don't want to be the distributors of it. Children benefit from grace. Adults still benefit, but they stand out. What do they do? They distribute. Amen. So grace is loving. So loving, giving, and sacrificing. You know you can either be always receiving that, or giving that. Amen. Amen. We say children start off with always, give me, give me, give me, give me. God loves me. Everything me. Uh, righteousness me. Uh, no, me. If you stay that way too long, you stay a child because you always think it's all about you. But maturity is, having received the grace of God, I extend that grace to a neighbor. I extend that grace to a brother. I am now the same person. I haven't received God's gift. I am now giving. I am now loving. I am now sacrificing. Can we get a believing amen? So the Bible calls this the grace of God. Look at so the grace of God is the love of God. Okay, moreover, brethren, 2 Corinthians 1 verse uh, 8, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, we do you to witness of the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia. So in the churches, so you don't say God just came and entered this church. After that service, all of them just became givers. Ah, no. It is the churches. Meaning this grace is not, is not a special grace. It is just that the Macedonian church yielded to the grace specially. Amen. amen. Church, amen. What is this grace? We saw it in verse 2. How that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their... Joy. I want you to read it with us. Meaning they were going through trials. But they were the most joyful people. Why were they joyful? They were joyful 
because they did not forget that God loves them. Do you remember where we started off from in Psalm 17, verse 22, where, we, where he said, they did not believe that God cared for them. And so they carried that morose behavior in the wilderness. What's wrong with God? Where is God? Give us water. Give us water. You know, they were whining babies, always whining. Rather than say, you know, you know, even children don't act like that. That's why the Bible says, all right, if you're not a kid, don't be like children. You know, you give, um, if, you, if you tell your child that you're the president, they'll believe. If you tell your child, if, if they say, mom, you know you bought me this, can you buy me that? Your child doesn't come to you and say, I know you will know. I, I know, I know, I, I, I know you, I know you, I know, I, I, I know you bought me uh, that uh, pencil. But you, you, you can, you, you will never buy me a PS. If the, moment, the moment your child talks like that, there's something wrong. It cannot be. Children are not wired like that. You must have rewired them. <laughs> a child normally would say, um, you know, mommy, you see, I'm just thinking that what I want is this. What I want is that. They're not, they don't come with a mindset of unbelief. You don't want to rewire them say, ah, no, we don't have money like that too. I can't buy you a swimming pool. Amen. <laughs> yeah. You get in the point. Yeah. All right. Okay, let's continue. The Bible says, in the midst of their trials, I mean, in the midst of their trials, they were people that exuded joy because they knew God cared for them. You know, you might not know everything about the present situation that you are in, but there's something you know. God cares for you. Can we get a believe in amen? Can we get a believe in amen? He now says, look at it. He says that and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberty. He says they were very poor, but they were givers. Why were they givers? They were givers because they had been beaten by the spirits. You know, when I travel sometimes outside the country, I, I get beaten. Okay, let me say it well so I'm not lying. I, my wife gets beaten by fly, at least. That. <laughs> How we know, me, I, we don't know on my own body because it's like our, our body is just um, black like that. But we know our own because from, you know, <laughs> from fair, it goes red. So we know, ah, that's a mosquito, right? Okay, my point is, we have been beaten by the spirit. When there is a bite, there is a response. So when the mosquito bites her, her skin gets red. Response. The believer has been beaten by the spirit. So he has a natural response to life. He is generous. You need to be trained either by your mind or by things not to live out the generous life. When you become born again. Another, you, some people you notice that when you got born again, you just felt like all that is yours is others. You just felt like, you know what, let me, let, me, let me take care of everybody. If that didn't happen to you when you're born again, rewind, go back. Go back, go back. You just feel like, you know what, oh God, like there's no peace, there's no problem in this world. Everything will be fine. It's old, old believers now, they say, oh, it's like you're in your honeymoon, sir. But, but because the spirit of generosity, the spirit of love, you see no evil in people until people show you. You just be like, oh, I'm a new creation. Oh, bless you, sister. Everybody. That, that, when you first got born again, that's what happened. Because of the spirit of generosity. And that's why you realize that it is the cares of this world. The issues of this world that changes men in their minds. Yeah? So, he says, these guys, were, it touched Paul. They were so generous, even though that they were very poor. Look at it. Verse 3. Paul says, I bear record. That even beyond their power, they were willing of themselves. Look at verse 4. Praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift. It says these people that did not have money were begging poor. Have you, have you, uh, my grandmother used to be like that. You know, when we were growing up, we used to receive a lot of visitors at home. Right? And when they're leaving, they always would give my grandmother money. Right? And my grandmother said, oh no. Don't give us, oh, no, don't do that, don't do that. We are privileged to have you in our house, don't do that, don't do that. And they will be dragging. Me and I'm a young man, passing up like, Uncle Senator, give me the money if you don't want to give up. What, what was all this dragging that is happening here? Senator, boy, give me the money. <laughs> Amen, right? And, but the point is, the man will be begging her. So you would see that he really wanted to do what? 
give it to her. She's saying no. This is the same word here. With all interest, take it. Take it. Take it. My grandma will say no, no, no. Then finally, every, every time, my, mother always, my grandmother always take that money. Every, there's no one that left with the money. I think it's just a scheme. She's not here, but yes, fine. Amen. She will do that scheme. It, it must happen. Five minutes, they'll be dragging. They'll be dragging. Oh, no. She'll not be saying, oh, maybe we should go and pack some food for you. She said, okay, if you really want to give us the money, give it to us. Yeah, yeah. So praying, I'm saying that the believer is that kind of person that goes and says, what are the needs here? It's not about how much you have. It's about the heart to just want to be a part of. Amen. Praying with much entreaty. Look at it here. He said, pray with much entreaty that you will receive of the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministry of the saints. They wanted to be a part of blessing other people. Can we get a believing? Amen. Amen. I'm saying Christianity is other people minded. I'm saying the spirit of Christ will get you actually thinking of others. What can I do? What, he said, what can I do to move the kingdom forward? What can I do? That's, that's the point there. Amy, let's continue. Look at verse 5. What does God want from you? Can I break it to you? God does not want your money. God wants your heart. Amen. When you give the Lord your heart, it's called consecration. Every other thing around your life is not a topic of discussion. I'll say it again. What does God want from man? God does not want man's money. God wants man's heart. When he has a hold of man's heart, man will respond with what he has. Praise God. Church, praise God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Look at verse 5. So that's what consecration is. Giving yourself to the Lord. You know when you get born again, sometimes people always say they are giving their lives to Christ. When you get born again, you don't give your life to Christ. Because technically you don't have a life to give. You were dead in sin. So he gives you his own life. You now have life. He is now waiting for you to do what? Give that life back to him. That's what we call consecration. Sean, that will be, Lord, I give you my heart. Meaning, what you want to do? I'm going to follow the word. I'm going to live for you. So when we say give, so we don't tell the unbeliever to give his life to Christ. We tell the believer. We tell the believer, and take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. Take my mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, let's continue. Look at verse 5. And this they did as not, not as we hope, but first they gave. I want you to be there. What do you give first? What do you give first? What is God looking for first? Yourself. They, they gave themselves to the Lord. Amen. amen. Church, amen. amen. They gave themselves to the Lord. How, <laughs> how do you give yourself to the Lord? Is in that verse. Is the next three words after. How do you? Because you know I can say I've given myself to the Lord. How you? Then there's no accountability. How do you give yourself to the Lord? You give yourself to the Lord by giving yourself to people or a structure of spiritual accountability. Can we get a believe in Amen? amen. Look at what he said. They gave themselves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Amen. amen. So the point is, how do you give yourself to God? You plug into a vision. Amen. You give yourself to people. That is why the Bible is written with the local church in mind. So when it says, I'm giving myself to the Lord, is that you are in a local church. You are part of what is going on there. You are loving there. You are serving there. You are giving. It is God's will that every believer is in a local church committed. If you are not in a local church committed there, you are not in the will of God. Because the Bible says, consecration is that you give yourself to the Lord and to people. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look at, look at verse 7. Therefore, as you abound. So the Corinthian church was a very awesome church. They were a church that were people of faith. Verse 7. They were a church that they were people of utterance. 
The, so meaning, just like you get it, me people of knowledge, when you get into the Corinthian church, tongues, you get it? Interpretation, revelation, vision, all manner of things was happening in that church. So Paul is now saying, you see the same way in church, tongues flows. The same way in church, revelation goes. The same way in church, people are men of faith. There is all trans. He said, look at it there. He says, and in all diligence and in your love, see that ye abound in this grace also. So he's now saying that, brothers, the way revelation flows like a river in your midst, the way faith, tongues, interpretation, the way the gifts of the fierce spirit are flowing in your midst, ensure that this grace of giving flows too. Meaning that you are the one that yields yourself to speak in tongues. Can we get a believe in amen? You are the one that yields to interpret. You are the one that you say, God, okay, yes, I'm available for you to use me. So God will drop things that will be a blessing to other people. So he says the same way you are the one that yields to giving. Praise God. Hallelujah. Church, praise God. Someone say, I yield. I yield. Someone say, I yield. I yield. Come on, I yield. I yield to the grace of giving. You are the one that yields to it. Remember, God is love. God is giving. God is sacrificing. God shows us that in Jesus Christ. Jesus could have at, the, at Gethsemane stand up and just continue. He's not doing again. Meaning he's not dying. You'll just be praying. You'll just be saying the kingdom of God is coming, but it's not this week. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. He, but he stayed there. He chose to. He sacrificed. We are now saying you are the same too. We are saying you are the same too. So God says here, as ye abound in the grace of all these other graces, abound in the grace of giving. Look at verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Someone say, I know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. What is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ? If you have been listening so far, don't read that verse again. What have we said is the grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ? Grace is love, what? giving, sacrificing. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ will be love, giving, and sacrificing. So it's now saying, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, that word rich then means he knew no sin. Rich in the Bible, anytime he's talking about money, he calls it, he calls it uncertain riches. When he's talking about what God has done for you in Christ, he calls it riches. Riches of his liberality. His riches in glory. Yeah, that, that's, so he's now saying, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, he, for your sake, he became poor. What does it mean to be poor? He carried sin. That's the sacrifice. That through his poverty, you might be rich. What is the explanation there? He's trying to say, see what Jesus did. Jesus sacrificed for you that you would have life. Jesus, Paul is now using the message. The message of what Christ has done to teach people about giving. Are you getting it? Jesus died for you. He died. He did not have any sin. He took upon your sin. He became poor that through this poverty of his, you might become rich. You know, if you didn't read, and that's why I always teach people, read the Bible in context so you don't come out with a wrong conclusion. If you don't read this Bible in context and you read just 2 Corinthians 8 verse 9, you're just going to say, God, Jesus became poor so that I can be rich. Bugatti is here. And that's how people get disappointed. Get me right. God blesses people. I'm an advocate. I'm a very staunch advocate of God blessing people. When we, he walked with the Jews, he, he, he was reckless in his giving. He said, don't you know me? I, do you know my hand is not short? And he would ensure that the whole place is filled with meat for them in the wilderness. So God, don't get me wrong. God blesses people. We are only saying this scripture is not talking about salvation is not the way God makes people materially rich. That's why a lot of people get disappointed because they are told, come to Jesus. He will make you rich. No, the, the, he became poor is that he took your sin. That you might become rich is that the riches that God is talking about there is that you will have the spirit. Say, I have the spirit. I have the spirit. Okay, I have the Holy Spirit. I am spiritually rich. 
Yes, yes. So that's what God has done for you. But God is using the message of salvation to teach. Because the message of salvation is the teacher of the new creation. Amen? Amen. When you want to say to a believer, be patient, what do you say? Don't you say, oh, if you are not patient, you will die. You don't talk like that. You say, see how God was patient with you. Be patient with others. The message of the gospel is our only teaching slide. If you want to talk to somebody about forgiveness, just, uh, uh, don't forgive. Stay there. You say, forgive one another as Christ has forgiven you. In the syllabus of Christianity, we follow. In that he does something, we do. So how is the believer a giver? It's because he can point it out so clearly that Christ gave. Amen. So the believer is a giver by nature. Anything we are instructed to do, we have a prototokos, a firstborn that did it. You, uh, uh, did you see Jesus pray? So you pray. Did you see Jesus give? He gave his life. Do you think Jesus is patient? So you are patient. Are you getting how we rule in this kingdom? We don't say, no, 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 in my family, that's it. My auntie, my auntie, my uncle, and my great-grandmother, when they get angry, they scatter everywhere. So all this one, I've not even broken the camera. We are still fine. No, you don't talk like that. <laughs> I'm a new creation. It boasts about what God has done in Christ. Stop taking your lineage from your heritage. Ah, you know, in our genealogy, in our genealogy, we, 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 get, we, we steal people's cars. No, don't talk like that. Just say, I'm a new creation. From where I come from, we, we, love, we, we love radically. Yeah. Say, ah, Sister Victoria, I'm, I'm afraid for you. Say, what happened? The end happened. Say, no, I'm just, I will love you. And you are really concerned for her. I, I don't know how you will cope. That's, the, that, that's, that's what I'm, I'm praying for you. So boast on what God has done in Christ. Stop boasting on your family lineage of all those bad, bad things that you want to endorse. Amen? Amen. Say, ah, brother, we are givers. My giving will touch you. It's a matter of time. That's how you talk. Say, ah, no, I'm a giver. I you know, listen, listen. Listen, I need to practice self-control because as I'm looking at you now, it's like I should give you something. Talk about your kingdom. Boast about your kingdom. You realize that you will act out your kingdom. Hallelujah. How many people have said something so long that it becomes real to you? Yeah, that's the way it is. Amen. Praise God. I always say it all the time. I'm handsome. I believe it now. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. My point to you is talk about the riches of what God has done in you that it might show up. We don't get angry here. And when we do get angry, we actually forget about it. We don't take so long because the Bible says, do not let anger, do not let anger go down, let the night go down before a man actually turns away from anger. For anger opens the door to the devil. So you say, glory to God. That must mean anger does not reign here. Oh, anger does not reign here. Even, even if you are still angry. Right? Turn away from your wife. Anger does not reign here. Glory to God. Anger does not reign here. I'm a new creation. I'm talking to myself. This is who I am. Anger does not reign here. And I know, I know, I know. You can even ask. I know that I feel like slapping her. But anger does not reign here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you'll be real and uh, real. Amen. Praise God. The new life in Christ is not a denial of how you feel. It is acknowledging that there is a greater power that runs your life. Praise God. Say, I'm a, I'm a giver. The next time you hear to sacrifice for somebody, say, give out your car. Say, I'm not God. Every weapon against my family, don't talk like that. It's just a car. Don't use it. Don't talk to expose your poverty. Amen. Because there are greater things. Say, in the, I, I don't know how this will happen. God, this is too big for me. Hey, God, I'm in trouble. But God, ah, 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 my best watch. Hey, hey. But I'm a giver. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Emphasize the life in Christ. Emphasize it. It's just like when I minister to somebody and the pain does not get well. I don't say, hey, hey, ha, hey. There was a time that I ministered to somebody and I laid hands on the person. The person had prostate cancer and the person did not get well. I went back into my room. God, what happened? How can it be that I'm a messenger? I laid his hands on her, on him. He had prostate cancer. He was not well. And I heard the Lord say, when I laid hands on somebody and the person saw us trees, what did I do? 
I said, I laid hands. He said, go back and do this. I ran back. Oh, brother, can I have an appointment? With you? He came. Pa! Healed. Hallelujah. I'm saying, emphasize who you are in Christ. You will not feel it sometimes. You emphasize it. I am a new man in Christ. I am a giver by nature. This world, this economy, all of these things will not stop me from my ministry. I'm a sacrificer. God cares for me. I'm not going to look at the wind. I know I'm a new creation. Our life is supernatural. Don't leave it on natural terms. It is. It's supernatural. Listen, it's supernatural. It is. Amen. Amen. Church, amen. Amen. We know this grace. We know it. We know that grace. We know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is not an empty boast. He was, he was rich. He became poor. Meaning he stood in the place of sacrifice for me. He said, oh, glory to God, I will stand in the place of sacrifice for others. Through me, many will know Jesus. Through me, many will hear the gospel. We will fund the gospel. We will pray the gospel. We will sacrifice in prayer. We will do all of these things. For we know the grace. We are not men that walk around that do not know that grace. We know that grace. We know that grace. There is a grace at work in us. We don't pray for that grace. We know it. We have an experience with that grace. There is a ginosko. There is a fellowship in. We have an intimacy with that grace. We and that grace are one. Hallelujah. You will not feel it. You are to know it. You know he didn't say I feel that grace. He said I know. I know that grace. It's the same grace that you know that says he never leaves me nor forsake me. The same grace that you know that says that when you lay your hand on the sick, the person recovers. It's that same grace that you know he cares for me. It's that same grace that you say, no, I'm patient. I don't live in anger. I don't live in malice. It's that same grace you say, I'm a giver. It's the same grace. We know that grace. Jesus is that grace. Jesus came into this world and died for me. Hallelujah. It is knowing that grace that makes you a giver willingly. Amen. amen. Church, amen. Amen. A amen. amen. Have you met some unwilling givers? Amen. The Bible says it is accepted if it is willing. Look at verse 12. 2 Corinthians 8, 12. Next week we'll talk about the different ways we give. Different things. We are going to answer that very great question. Do believers tight? All those kind of things. We'll do that next week. But look at verse 12. What is God as we close today? Which I mean. What is God after? God is after your mind. So it's first your mind before things. Brother, God checks the mind. It is people that check outside. Amen. The Bible will tell you, God, first Samuel 30, God does not see as men see. What does God look at? God looks at the heart. Men look at outward appearance. So that's why we always say, let outward appearance be okay. It's an answer. You're going for an interview. It's not God that is your interviewee or interviewer. Dress well. Dress well because it's God. men look at outward appearance. Have a good ambience. Do things well. Embrace excellence. Because you are not living on the earth with God. You are living on the earth with, ma with man. And it matters. Hallelujah. How you present yourself. How you talk. Don't say, don't say God, the Holy Ghost is here with me. The Holy Ghost is here with you. But that man or that woman will be affected by what you do or what you say or how you look. Because God looks at the outward appearance. Amen. amen. Church, amen. amen. Uh, yeah, amen. You, you dress in a particular kind of way. They, they, they ask you, are you serious? You say, ah, you're offended. Why are you offended? Did the man tell you he's God? God can look at your heart. You know if you wear a <laughs> naked burger and shirt for an interview and it's God that is interviewing you, he might not talk. I remember <laughs> a particular interview. Right? A lady came. I would have forgiven it, but... The, I, I had a co-interviewer. The lady came in to, for the interview. She came in from the gym. She said, you know, I, just, I was just thinking about it. That if I go back home, so that I'm not too late. And she came in all of those, <laughs> for interview. 
professional, you know, <laughs> Gen Z. Ah, well, well, me, you know, my point was that if you could do the job, we we'll see how it goes. But hey, they didn't hire. Out. I just got to realize <laughs> because men look at the outward appearance. Thank you. Men look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. Even in giving, God looks at the heart. That's why I said, let it be willing. He's willing, happy, a privilege. Look at first, look at it there. Second Corinthians 8 verse 12. For if there be a willing mind, a willing mind. We're going to look at it next week. Even God will teach the Jews how to have a willing mind. He will show them in how they presented their tithes. He didn't just say, ah, priest, it's my title. Bah. He said, no. He said, oh, I come to you with this, my tithe today. And I acknowledge you, oh God, that you are the one that brought me out of Egypt. And you have brought me into the promised land like you promised our fathers. Take this and acknowledgement that you are a faithful God. Father, I worship you. That's how they dropped it. Because he was teaching them what it means to have a willing mind. Amen. He says if it's a willing mind, it is what? It's accepted. It's a willing mind. Oh, Father, what a privilege. And you know, if you don't think of salvation, you won't have a willing mind sometimes. I've asked, have things been tight for you before? Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. No, no, no. This, this one is not faith. I'm talking of fact. Yeah. And it just looks like, okay, no, I'm not, uh, you know. But you remember again. He died for me. He comes first. He comes first. I remember, right? I'll never forget, he's the pastor now. <laughs> uh, I was sitting down somewhere. And the man was just hearing me say the fact that, oh, right, I don't have so much. And then he saw me, Brother Chigo, he just saw me saying, okay, I think it's not a problem. You know, it's not a problem. I'm happy to work from, um, where was that now? Bermondsey. I was going to walk to Hackney. I said, God deserves this. Who am I? And he said, hey, he will do that. I said, it's not as if, if I took the money and spent it, he will see anything. But he has done a lot for me. It is a willing mind. In the midst of nothing, a willing mind. What? It, it is acceptable. That's why your salvation is what you always remember when you give. That's how we taught the Jews. They are to remember their rescue from Egypt. That's how they brought the tithes. Oh, Father, thank you. They said this is what, oh, okay, I don't have, but this I have. Oh, thank you for the privilege to give. Because I have all I have. I have eternal life. I have even these things because you have blessed me. That's how you give. That's how the believer gives. If there be a willing mind, it is accepted. So that means there are things that you can do as a giving that is not accepted. It says, according to that which a man has, not according to that which he does not have. So in the giving of God, God says, give from what you have. Praise the Lord. Church, praise the Lord. Give from what you have. Give thinking of the other person. When you say you're thinking of the other person, you're really thinking about God. What he has done for you. For you know that grace that is in Christ Jesus. Rise upon your feet today. And I want you to, wherever it is that you are, lift up your hands and thank God for that grace. We know the grace. We love him because he loved us first. Blessed be your name, O oh God. See what he said. He said they did not think that he cared enough for them. Lift up your hands and say, Father, I thank you for the grace that is in Christ Jesus. I thank you because you care for me. All right. Wherever it is that you are, right, I want us to just extend our hands of care to a neighbor, wherever it is that you are. And we're going to pray because we're going to be sorting out anything that is in need. Remember, he said, they did not believe I could take care of them. So you're going to be stretching out your hands to that neighbor where is beside you, wherever, right there. And you're going to be stretching your hands and you're going to be saying something very simple. I stretch my hands in faith. Listen carefully. Don't start before we... Uh -huh. I stretch my hands in faith as an extension of God's care towards you. Declaring that that's which you desire. That's which needs to be sorted out. That's which that you need. 
is sorted by the care of God in Jesus name please I want you to extend that now oh the care of God giving of God grace of God flows through me flows through you the grace of God he flows through me he flows through you grace of God come on remember I told you to pray with a boldness the care of God flows through me flows through you the care hey. oh the care the care thank you Lord <laughs> oh thank you Jesus thank you Lord Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. One last thing, right? You know, because sometimes it's good for us to be accountable. Tell your neighbor that when things change and turn and you see the care of God, do not hesitate to inform me. Tell them, tell them, tell them. Amen. Tell them. Tell them. Ensure they agree to it. Yeah, when things change, you will tell me, right? You will tell me. Praise God. Let's close in this service today. Father, we thank you for your care. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your giving. We thank you for your love. We give you praise, oh God. We step out in faith this week, conscious of your love and your grace. We are hubs of grace. We give you praise because our lives are changed for that which we have received in you. In Jesus' mighty name, and the saints say, Amen. and the saints say,